Hey. We don't have enough white, do I? I might be about five minutes early. <laughs> Hey, Andre. I think I'm about five minutes early. I'm thinking, uh, Jackson, did he ever give me my glasses? If he did, I don't know where he set them up. Hey, Xavier. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you guys doing? Welcome to the um live. Welcome to the High Life with Ronnie. Good afternoon. Hey, GMB. <coughs> I almost didn't make it, y'all. Almost didn't make it. As y'all can tell, you can hear your girl is sick. I know this weather is changing. Because I keep getting hit. It's my second time in two months. I keep getting hit. What's up, T-Talk? What's up, everybody? Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to On the Couch New Time. Remember, I told you guys three weeks ago, 3 p.m. used to stay the time. And yes, I am in the bed in my pajamas. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Miss Girl. Miss Shy Girl 101. Hey, KC. Hey, GMB. Yes, in the DMV, and that's what's key. It keep grabbing me. Excuse me. It keep grabbing me of all the people that this weather, what's up, Lean? That this weather won't keep messing with. It, it, it keep messing with me. And I'm like, why? This is the second time I'm sick. And last time was two weeks, almost two weeks and a half. I was so sick. Hey, Miss Woods. Hey, humble lion. And now, y'all, um, Wednesday night, was it Thursday morning? I almost went to the hospital. Oh. I woke up. Oh, I, I'm on live. I woke up. I woke up and I had a fever. My nose was stuffy. I, um, I was going to call my sister. I called her Amalams. <clears throat> so when I said my body was on fire, I was burning up. I was shaking. I had the chills. I woke my son up. I said, I think I need to go to the hospital. He said, the hospital? He said, what time is it? I said, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. I said, I can't do it. I said, I think it's something wrong. We took COVID tests, so I didn't have COVID. They wrote me off of COVID. I just got a cold or flu or whatever. Yeah, I was up 4 o'clock in the morning. When I said my eyes was red, my body was on fire, and I opened up my mouth, you could feel the heat come out my mouth, and I was shaking. And I was like, I need to go to the hospital. I said, I'm calling ambulance or I'm calling my sister. But somebody got to come take me to the emergency room. And my son said, Ma, you don't need to go to the emergency room. They told you, all you got is a cold. All you got is a cold. He was like, you got to, you got to, um, you will go to the emergency room for nothing. You took the birth for nothing. And so I didn't go, I didn't call the ambulance. I didn't call my sister. I just laid back there and, and they kept taking the cover off of me. And I was and I, I was just sweating. And then it got to be about eight o'clock in the morning. And I said, you know what, give me two NyQuil's. I took two NyQuil's, went to sleep. When I woke up, I was soaked and wet. I took two NyQuil's, and when I woke up, I was soaked and wet. When I say I was soaked and wet, my uh, my nightgown, I was sweating all behind my back. I smelled like sweat up underneath my neck. My clothes was wet. I got, I said, oh, my God. My son said, I said, I am soaking wet. It's like when I took the two NyQuil's and I laid down, it's like the, um, the cold, like, sweat itself or whatever. And so I just, I said, I said, so get in the shower. So I just got in the shower, put on some clean nightgown, clean clothes. And y'all, I just been fighting ever since. 
I was so glad I had a fever last night because yesterday it felt like I was trying to get back warm again. I told Jackson, I said, I think my fever tried to come back. But thank God my fever didn't come back. And then I called my son, Michael. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, man, I took it night east to the museum, which y'all probably see in his upcoming blog. He said, damn, he said, I don't feel good. He said, he said, he said, I don't know because I took a shower, went outside. He said, he said, I could feel it in my throat. He said, I'm not feeling good. I said, that's when I told him that I was sick and Josh was sick. He said, y'all, our food is making us sick. Most of our food says made with uh, bioengineered food ingredients. What, I'm lying. Hey, Miss Young for the uh, Baltimore, how you doing? So my girlfriend, hey Pamela, thank you. Everybody hit the thumbs up. We got 12 thumbs up, 93 people. And a lot of people haven't caught on that on the couch is um at 3 o'clock now. I think I made an announcement three weeks ago. This is our third one at 3 o'clock because I had the house to myself. People go to work and everything. This more crowd, crowd more quiet. Unless everybody leave, they not getting ready for work. And you got to excuse me, and I apologize for all the sniffling and everything. Like I said, I'm literally still stuffed up. I'm still weak, and, you know, and every, it's a whole lot of stuff. I was telling my sister, I got so many health problems, you know, diabetes, um, high blood pressure, and stuff. So when I get sick, and then I'm 54 years old, a little bit older now, so when I get sick, I can hit hard. I just don't get sick and be like, oh, you feel good in 24 hours. When I get sick, it's like I get hit hard. Like, I get knocked down for the count. Um, like, I, 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 and I be like, wow. So, yeah, but I hope I, I'm making it through. And so my girlfriend said, you you doing on the couch? Hey, Miss Scott. I said, remember on the couch is at 3 o'clock now. I said, but, girl, I took me to NyQuil's and I'm laying here. I said, oh, no. I told her, I said, I am so sick. I said, I don't know if I could do it. And then my son always tell me that. Um, thank you, JB. My son always tell me that you put it in the universe. He said, if you say you're sick, you're going to be sick. I said, no, motherfucker. I ain't going to, because I say I'm sick, I'm going to be sick. I said, I'm sick because I am. <laughs> That's why I had to tell him, because he was trying to tell me that um, when I thought I was getting sick, I, I, oh, I, 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 oh, uh, what did he say he did? He said, I've been, I drunk this and drunk that, and I, and, and I fought it all in one day. I said, okay, that's you, me. You are two different people. Your body, hey, J. Poo, I said, your body is younger than mine. Your immune system is stronger than mine. And everything. And, uh, then he was in here he laughing. I said, it ain't nothing funny. But um, Joshua did make me some. I've been drinking on some um, some ginger, uh, fresh ginger. Joshua been chopping up fresh ginger um, tea lemon and honey and holes and he putting it all in the concoction and i'm gonna tell you that thing is good hey tennessee nikki girl that thing is so good so he been making me like take some fresh ginger and cut ginger up and he we got them gallon tea bags the real big giant tea bags so he cut open the top of the tea bag and he cut up fresh ginger and he stuck ginger inside the tea bag, then tied the tea bag back up. And then he put it in the water and boiled it like that. Then he added lemon, honey, and holes to our cups. When I tell you it was so refreshing and so good. Oh, humble line, I believe you're that. And so that's what I've been drinking on that. I told him I need some rum in it. I said, we need some rock and ride rum. That's what we need. And hey, K and, and Ray. K and, and Ray. How you guys doing? So I was waiting for everybody getting here because I was a few minutes early. You know, it was supposed to be 3 o'clock. Whatever, um, whatever 3 o'clock is your time. So before we get started on conversation and talk, let me just say I'd like to thank God 
but wake me up, spend another day with my family and friends, because that law clock didn't wake me up. He did. Can I get an amen? Amen. Especially everything going on with me. Again, I do apologize. Sign is so stuffy and all that stuff because I'm under the weather and I'm trying to fight through it. That's why you haven't gotten any dance videos, any hoop videos. Honey, I'm so weak. I can't hoop a thing. My sister came over here this morning. She said, look at you. I said, well, she said, you losing weight. She said, look at your legs and your, and your, and your feet so skinny. I said, yeah. She said, ooh, you doing the hoop. I said, I ain't done nothing in a week. I said, I ain't dance, I ain't done nothing. I said, I can't, I said, I can't get up to But I'm praying to God. You know, this week I made it do some stuff, but um, I said, I ain't done nothing. I don't got the energy. Because along with being sick, it makes you weak and fatigue and all you do. And I've been, I've been sleeping. Pop it, NyQuil, and sleep it. Hey, Nick, with me. So, quick FYI, before I, before I even start talking about um, what I want to talk about, that crazy woman in Hollywood, y'all all know who I want to just give a, a, give a notable mention to, because, you know, I don't like to be talking about people, but I, I do listen to the tea, and I watch the tea, but I don't always give the tea. So sometimes I think I be wanting to get a tea sometimes because it'd be interesting. Especially when right now I ain't got nothing going on. <laughs> so, y'all, before we get started, it's a YouTube lies be blocking certain words. Shaking my head, it's YouTube. Oh, YouTube blocks somebody? Yeah, they do. And too, also, I know I had certain words blocked, but not certain words I had blocked on really negative type words. Because, you know, as a YouTuber, we can have certain words block, and then there are words that YouTube automatically block themselves. <clears throat> so, um, the first thing before we start talking about that girl, because she's just all over the place, and I just want to know, is, 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 is it worth it? Is the price of fame is... Is the price of fame is worth what you put your family through. The humiliation, the embarrassments, the, the, the tell-all type situation. Is the price of fame worth that for your family, for the embarrassment and the family? Whatever happens to being humble and, and, and keeping some things to yourself and all that stuff. Hey, Bridget. Okay, first thing, I don't know if anybody noticed. I did something that was against my wheelhouse, that was against my children told me to do, my girlfriend Julia told me not to do. But everybody told me this after I put it up. I did a GoFundMe fund. And I did a GoFundMe fund because y'all, everybody know my situation and I was trying to move and everything like that. I, had a, I got an opportunity to move next month. But I need a little bit of extra cash to do so. Um, yeah, you know I'm talking about her humble lion. So a couple of Soul Squad members had told me in the past, um, Miss T, won't you do a GoFundMe for me to help you, you know, with your moving? And I had told them I didn't want to do it. And the reason why I told them I didn't want to do it is the reason why. Oh, is this a troll? Hey, um, Catalina Shaw, how you doing? Yes, hi Catalina. And um, so I put the GoFundMe up. It was going really well. Out of all the um things I ever put on my community board, I that had the most comments. The most come like over a hundred something comments on the community board. I put the GoFundMe up for fifteen hundred dollars. I mind you, for me to get it to my apartment is fifty six hundred. Because the apartment is the apartment is fifty six hundred. You gotta have first month's rent and security deposit. I didn't pick the I didn't put a GoFundMe up for fifty six hundred. I put it up for fifteen because that's all I needed. My sons 
on the back end who I would be sharing an apartment with because unfortunately, I can't make it out here on my own. I try, my business is not flourishing like that, my YouTube is not flourishing like that, and right now, I can't afford an apartment on my own. So me and three of my sons are getting a three bedroom and a den that is very expensive. It's $2,800 a month. So on the back end, yes, my sons did carry me with the rest of the money. I have to come up with my portion. That's why you didn't see the whole 5,600. It was only up there for 15. That's the only portion that I had to come up with. Everybody else had theirs. They waiting on me and waiting on me for we could do the application. So I said, let me go ahead and do a GoFundMe because I want to move by November. Granted, they only had, they had three apartments. Now they got two. And my girlfriend, he said, are you going to do the apartment and this and that and the other? I want to move November the 1st. So me being impatient, instead of waiting or and stuff like that, I said, let me go ahead and do a go for me for 1500 and whatever I raise, I'll put that towards the end that on the part that I needed. And I said, I'm not going to look at no comments or none of this stuff and none of that stuff like that. No, we split me everything. Girl, I can't afford no $2,800 a month. Why you think I just said I can't afford that by myself. I'm not popping like that to afford that by myself. And like I said, I knew I said I never wanted my sons again, but everybody's working and I can't admit, I can't afford it. And I got and I gotta put a roof over Jackson here. So at the end of the day, I said I'm gonna do what I gotta do. And um and so I said it. And then when my sons found out I did a go for me fun, they said, You did what? I said, yes, and mom, why you do that? You should just be patient. I said, well, November first is around the corner, and I need to get this and do this and do that. And um, my friend Judy, I said, you shouldn't have did that. She said, you know how people are. And I said, no, because a couple of my soul squad members even asked me to do a GoFundMe fund so I could get help. I said, so, and I didn't want to do it. I said, but I went on and did it anyway. I said, I'm just not going to read no negative comments. I'm going to leave it alone and, you know, and let it be what's going to be. Girl, I took that thing down. Because out of all the things that I ever put up on um, my community board, it had over hundreds of something comments. And 90% of the comments was negative. They were rude. They were trolly. They were this. They were that. And only reason I took it down, and I didn't even read the comments, I read one person comment who told me in the comments that she never read anything like this before. The young lady in her comment that popped up on my thing, it said, she said, I have never read anything so out astonishing and so rude. Some stuff she has said, she said, these comments is appalling and they don't make any sense sense and then she was like if your go for me is still up she said i know where you coming from i've been there and she was like if your go for me is still up and when i get paid next week i will most definitely donate to your go for me so on her comment alone i looked at myself i said you know what just take it down i didn't even go read the comments i didn't want my heart broken because everybody had, everybody in my surroundings told me, don't do it because people going to come from you. My inner instinct told me, don't do it because people going to come for you. But I was just so desperate and ready to move, and I wanted to get my part up with everybody else's. So I reluctantly and did it. And, of course, from what the person said, they were coming for me, like, like left to right. And coming for my sons, like, left to right, not even knowing the whole story. Because the whole story is it didn't cost 1500 It's literally 5600 And, like I said, they got this on the back end. I was trying to um, do my part. And so I removed the GoFundMe. I, I raised $250. I refunded everybody back their money, and I said, you know what, I will never get on here to ask anybody for anything else again. If I don't have it, I just don't have it. I'm going to learn to keep believing in God. I'm going to learn to just have faith, and what's for me will be for me when he want it for me. So everybody who did donate to the GoFundMe fund, 
Thank you. But I refunded everybody. You probably got it. You probably got an email. And it takes three to seven days to get your um donation back. So it said y'all should see how much these African YouTubers get from donations and they be scamming. Yeah, so that's what I did because at the end of the day, like I said, I don't want nobody to think I'm scamming nobody or like she said, they be scamming. I am not a scamless person. And so, so I just took the GoFundMe down. I did the refund. Yeah, because I, I put, yeah, girl. So I took it down. I did the refund. So everybody who did um help me get to 250, you guys should have got an email. Cause I think I did a couple of days ago, even before I got sick. I think I did a couple of days ago. And I'm just gonna take my time. Yeah, it was up on the community post. Girl, there's enough people who saw it who, who went who went ballistics on me. But uh and that those who did, and those, and I'm not saying every hundred and ten, if every hundred and ten people person was a negative, but I'm telling you about 80% to 90% of it was just negative. And it was over 120 comments. And so, yeah, so um, that's what I wanted to say, because I wanted people to be like, what happened to the GoFundMe fund? So I wanted to explain what happened, that that's the reason why I took it down. It was just unbearable, and I just couldn't take it. And I was like, it, and it wasn't worth it. And, and, that's, and that was gonna drag me into my other story that I want to talk about, is money worth the pain and suffering that you go through to get to it? Like with that GoFundMe fund, the comments, the backlash, and, and, and the stress behind it, it wasn't worth it to me for my mental. That goes to tell me now, we talk about Jada Pickett Smith. She's back in these streets, y'all. She backed in the street. She's back in these streets again. And that's what I was saying. Is money worth it? Is it worth the embarrassment? Is it worth the humiliation? Is it worth the stress you put your um obviously she read some. You know, I didn't read none of them. Um, I actually, I read, I didn't read none of them. You know why, Susie Q? Because I didn't want that read it. I read the one, the long email that the, that the young lady sent to me about how appalling the comments was. And I didn't want to read them because I am a very emotional person. And I know what I was doing. It was, it was coming from a place where that I really needed the help. And... I didn't want to read them because I didn't want to get my heart broken. So I went off what the young lady was telling me, what the comments were saying, and how she was so disgusted by all the comments and stuff. So I didn't want to, so I didn't want to read them. Because like I said, I'm an emotional person. And I know that I'm a good person. And I know that I do for people when I can do for them. And I have always stuff for people my whole life. So if I would have read them, I think it would have broke me down. I probably would have stopped crying. You know, I probably been stressed out. And then I probably been like, oh my God, you should have um, went with your first instinct, but you were just like being desperate or whatever. So I trusted the young lady's email because she was coming from a... Um, she was coming from a good place. And what she said, it was like, I was like, wow. So apparently she read through the through a lot of the comments and she was just so in shock. She was so in shock and so was like, and so I was like, you know what? I could I could believe what she's saying because I kind of figured it would be some trolls, but I didn't think it would be like that. So yeah, I know superstar. I know. Excuse me. And y'all, it's my cold. That's why I get my cold. And so yeah, so I was wondering. That's why I did Rochelle. 
I said, Mika, I am also leaving so my heart on my side. Yes, girl. That's been my flaw my whole life, Mika. But I don't know how to change it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just who I am as a person. It's part of me. So I can't change nothing that I feel like that's not wrong. You know what I'm saying? I have always been that type of person. I am that type of person. And I don't know how to turn that off or not be that person because then I will lose sight of who I am as a person. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But that's what I was talking about. And then that's when all that stuff started dropping about Jada Pickett Smith. No, well, I don't have a cash out, but it's my get cash out. I go through my son Jackson and his um dollar sign to the number two fly jack. Dollar sign to fly jack. And it's a picture of Beyonce. Uh Miss and um I saw she wrote this book. You know, the Smith household has been a little quiet lately since the big Oscar fiasco that Will did um, protecting his wife. Almost ended his career and all this stuff, everything, protecting his wife. Then this woman go drop a tell-all book. And she out here promoting this book every which way possible. She out here promoting this book every which way possible. But the feedback is so negative. It got people mouth hanging open. It got people looking at Will Smith like, are you a simp? Are you a simp? What is going on in your household? But see, we don't know what's going on in people's household. Everybody's household is their household. We're not going to know the just that everything that's going on in nobody's family. People only going to give you what they're going to give you. But apparently, Jada then gave a lot in this book, all the way up to the fact to say that her and Will has been separated. Not divorced, but separated since 2016. So you mean to tell me this man got on stage? You can test next up to four days. Okay, Cindy, that's what my son said. And um, for him to get on stage, almost lose his career, to do everything he did, and they not even together. They've been separated. Yeah, and you don't know if she's telling the truth because she's trying to sell, um, she trying to sell books, and that's why I said that is is it is 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 the money worth it? You know what I'm saying? Is it worth to always keep humiliating your husband? I mean, we started off with the affair that she had with August, with August, Oxtina, whatever his name is, that singer, that young singer, you know, because she was in an entanglement. She was in a quote unquote entanglement. Okay? Mean that you just slept sex and had sex with your with your son's friend. And apparently your husband gave you permission to do so, gave the boy permission. I mean, this the whole thing is just so crazy. Uh, somebody said that too, um, synthetic um hint that uh, she never loved Will. She never loved him. Apparently, she has always been and always will be in love with Tupac Shakur. Um, this is somebody that, you know, she had a thing for. They were best friends. Um, her everything before he passed away. May he rest in peace. They say, at this point, I blame Will. Yes, Rochelle, because you only let people get away with so much. Do he get off on the humiliation of her just her just dragging him. And so I'm, I'm going to tell you, the memes and stuff is going wild because people was like, I bet you he didn't even know. Um, I know. I know, Shelly B. Uh, and that's the thing is that I understand that what you were saying too. 
that go from a slippery slope and you give to your kids. You and I understand that, and that's the type of thing that I respect, Shelly B. Your comment that you just made. You know what I'm saying? I I can respect people having a comment, and it was a good. You know, it's coming from a good place. But I'm just want to like when you got to just be so negative and so nasty. You know what I'm saying? That's those comments that I you know that I respect because I respect the fact that no one has anything to give. Cause shit, I ain't got it. Why you think I'm exit? You know, I know it's hard out here. You know, I know everybody live from paycheck to paycheck, but I, it was it was just something that I took a chance on to try to do. You know what I'm saying? And I respect the fact that people could say, oh, dang, I wish I could, but I don't have it right now. And that's understandable. It really is. I understand that. You know, I just don't, I, what I don't understand is the hate. I didn't know that people were so hateful. You know, people are hateful in this world. I didn't know that people could say the things that they say and stuff like that. So that's why, you know, that's the part that get me. I get that people don't have and may not can help. I get that part, you know, and I get a good comment behind it when you say you can't and this is why. And I understand that. What I don't get is just the, 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 the you know, the me. It's not even hateful. It's just mean. Just plain old mean. If you don't have nothing nice to say, what your mama say? Don't say nothing at all. That's what it is. She said she thought she would be a superstar, and it didn't happen. Now it's time to money grab. Well, they talked about that, too, and one of the reasons why they may still be together is because of money. Because she know if she leave Will, he is more established and financially than she is. And so maybe she wrote this book so that she could finally, like, you know, get up and leave and she could leave on her own merits and she'll have the money to do so or whatever. I'm quite sure they may got some type of prenup agreement or something like that. But financially, um, Will has brought in more money to the merits than she has. You know, he has established more. Then um then she has she um he has established more in Hollywood than she has. You know, he has all he has all you know outshined her financially and in and, and stardom. Now don't get me wrong, she has played her part. She didn't have many parts, but I think financially I figure if she was to leave him. Uh, she wouldn't be financially stable as much. She'd be more financially stable than us. But not as much as she is as she's Mrs. Will Smith. So that that plays a part too. And then I heard too because they I I seen the real table talk that Will don't believe in divorce. Oh, I know that's right. Somebody said she's a black widow spider. I can feel you on that one. Hey, Bird, um, I heard he don't believe in divorce. And one of the Red Table Talks, Will has said his first wife, if she wouldn't have got a divorce, he wouldn't have divorced her. Even though, right, because he, I, the thing is, I don't like think he like to be alone. He don't like to be single. And, um, and he don't believe in divorce. And I think this time when he got with Jada, they made it came up with some type of agreement that if something don't work in this marriage, we stay together. We we, we separate, we stay together, we, we pretend like things are good because he did not want a divorce from his first wife. He said if it wasn't for his first wife filing, he wouldn't have got a divorce. She wanted a divorce, she filed for the divorce for what was going on in their marriage. Whatever their marriage was rocky, rocky whatever um, the reasons why she wanted that divorce, infide um, infidelity or whatever he was doing, that um, he wanted that divorce. I'm honestly paying Jay and Ruin Will and their kids. They've been living separate for seven years. Yes, Lisa. And somebody said, Did he, do he know that? Did he just find this out three days ago that he'd been living separate for seven years? They said, because she not a spring shit on people. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I've been watching all these little um, tea rooms and clips and all this other stuff. 
and um they just it's like somebody said we need to take away her 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 black card we need to do this we need to do that Oh, somebody said she said he hit on her while he was married, so that's not true. Oh, man. So she hit on her. He hit on Jada while he was married. Yeah, but he did, but he didn't want divorce. I heard that come out his mouth. I looked at a red table because, you know, some reason at Jada's red table, they tend to spill all their stuff out. And um, I just recently looked at a real table talk, an old one. It was Jada, their daughter. Will Smith and Jada's mother, and he said that, and he admitted, you know, that he did not want a divorce. Only reason he got divorced from his first wife, his daughter looked, and the things they said in front of their kids, because you telling me that you didn't want a divorce, and you, he said, I would have stayed in my marriage doing everything that I was doing, but I did not want a divorce. That divorce was forced upon me from my first wife. And his daughter looked at him in a way like, she, 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 she said, I'm going to tell you the look that his daughter gave him in, in this red table talk. She gave him a look as if like, so I'm lucky to be here. You know, because at the end of the day, if you didn't want a divorce and you would have still been married, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. And I'm like, wow. And um, and I just I just listened to that red table talk. They red table talk, if you never looked at Jada's red table talk, they be interesting, especially when she be spilling the tea about her family. She just she's just at the point now that she have no whole bars. She just letting it all out. She just letting it all out. Oh, don't forget about the other big tip. She said that Chris Rock, well, who, who's that man that he slapped? Chris Rock, is that who he slapped? You think she would have done the same thing to Tupac Tiffany? <laughs> um, she said he asked her out on a date. I seen one of her interviews. She said at one point in their relationship, her and Will, it was a rumor that her and Will was getting a divorce. She said it was a rumor. And she said Chris called her up. And these come from her words out of her mouth. That Chris called her up based on a rumor that was circulating in the tabloids that her and, her and Wilson was the voice in, he called her up and asked to take her out to dinner. He wanted to go out on a date. I was like, what? She just dropping bombs in this book, y'all. And then somebody said, well, that could be the real reason why Will Smith smacked Chris Rock. Just for what he did. <laughs> Just because what he did at the joke he said, and then he probably had a flashback because she, she probably told Will that Chris called her for to take her out. You think Jada lied about that? I, you know what? It's hard. It's, it's hard. One thing that as a person... What I never lie to try not to do is that, because I don't want nobody to take my truth from me, is that I'm not that person. I don't live in that person's shoes. I don't have that person's life experience. My thing is that your truth is your truth. If that's her truth, it's her truth. My thing is the way she go about airing the truth. You know, I think some things should just stay the way it need to stay. You know, I think she could have wrote a good book without, you know, telling all the things that she's telling in this tell-all book. I'm really not a book reader. I know a lot of people say they're getting it, they're going to buy. And I think they're getting it, going to buy because she's putting out these little, these little scripted details on what's in the book so that and not really saying a lot see it's called promotion so she's highlighting on the juicy parts of the book so that 
you could run out and buy it. So you, so you could get the book and see everything in its details. So she highlighting on, on, on specs of the book so people could say, oh my God, I got to go buy this book because I got to see what she's talking about. So she's not, she's saying, she's saying just enough of the important parts of this was, well, what's in this book to lure you in so that you could go buy it before she become bestseller. And that's what you're supposed to do. When you're, when you got something and you're promoting, that's entrepreneurship, people. That's what you do. You gotta, you gotta win. You gotta pull the people in. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna say, um, oh, I wrote. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, wait a minute. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. I think I pulled a muscle of my stomach. Oh. Oh. Mm. You know when you cough too hard, I pulled a muscle of my stomach. When you pull a muscle of your stomach, that hurt. I apologize. I'll give me some water. They say Will Smith sold one billion books. One billion books. Oh, wow. Yes, girl. I am so sick. I've been sick since uh, last week. I've been sick since last week. And yes, we, I took COVID tests. Don't have COVID. This is my second time I get sick in the last two months. <clears throat> I don't have COVID, but I just got a regular cold, and it's just it's just taking a toll on me. It really is with the fevers, the sweats, the chill, the weakness. I haven't eat. I have no my. I have little to none taste buds. I'm barely eating, and and order for me to taste something, I have to really season it. I have taste buds, but they are so they are so they are so not there. They, they're really not there that much. Yeah, I did a COVID test when I went to the doctor and stuff. It said, I think about this in care. Yeah, I'm, I'll get some of that. Hey, see, Star, so excuse me. And what I'm saying, so what I'm saying is that, and you know, by you talking too much, your throat get dry, and then it make you got to cough and everything, too. Uh, is that when you promote a book, that's what you're supposed to do. She's not doing anything wrong as far as her promotion because she's promoting the highlights of the book. That's just like when they do with the trailer of a movie. You know, they give you the best part of the movie. Then when you get in there and you be like, damn, all the good parts was um, in the trailer and the movie ended up being not that good. Yeah. I did, darling, Nikki. I had the fever. I had the chills. I had no taste. Somebody said they go and get a flu shot or oh, buddy. You know, I never had the flu shot. I had COVID shot, but never had the flu shot. I never had the flu shot. And we got to forget the flu is still out here, too. Because my sister was telling me that um, uh, somebody she know who's a nurse was saying there was a new type of COVID out that uh, people was passing away within two or three days of it. I was like, huh, I ain't heard nothing like that on the news. And she was like, yeah, so people still passing away from COVID and with a new string out, they be gone in two or three days. I'm like, Ugh. oh, Lisa, that's a great idea, Lisa. Said we all should read it together and talk about it. Oh, that's a good idea. First of all, how much does the book cost? <laughs> how much is she charging for the book? Hey, Mo Thomas. How much she charging for the book? 
And that, that's that's a good idea. We could read about it and see if it's all what it's cracked up to be. Because she is. One thing I can say is she's a good promoter. You know, she's a good promoter. She know how to get her stuff out there and make people interested. Make people interested. Hey, Taylor. And that's what she doing. She making people talk. And when you stir, when you stir the pot, and you make people talk, that keep you rebelling. That keep what you trying to do rebelling. That keep what you, what you, what your, what your, um, what you got out there rebelling. And that make people go out and get it because they want to hear more. Because she's only, gonna, she's only gonna say bits and pieces. She's gonna give you enough just to say, hey, let's go buy this book. I want to see the real deal. I want to see exactly what she's talking about. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you do it. Oh, Britney Spears, Black and Ball Polar. Britney Spears got a book coming out too. Um, okay. So, what Will Smith got a book out? And that's my thing. What Will Smith book about? Is he talking about their marriage and all these entanglements and the separations and all this other stuff? What is his book about? Oh, twenty two dollars not bad. I mean, they ain't got twenty two dollars. Well, what is his book about? Is he giving an all in all tea about his family? You know what I'm saying? Is he telling the insight about you know what's going on in his house? Oh, uh, yeah, they say it's going to be out soon, and it's going to be the beginning of the year. Okay. It's his life story. Okay. Yeah, that, that was her back then. <clears throat> so, like I said, she making it. She doing what she do. She promoting her book. She putting it out there, but my whole thing is, is the money worth it? If that's what I'm saying. Is it worth the humiliation? Is, is it worth the tear down of your husband? Is it, is it worth people looking at your family side eye? Not in your family, not in the family, because right now they see in your family, especially your husband. Some people say they blame Will Smith in the comments because he allowed to happen. And, you know, people only could do to us what we allow them to do. But um, for real, it makes her look um, crazy. Mm. But, uh huh. Oh, Jason Lyric was my movie. I love it. That was one of my favorite movies by her. Especially at the end. Because I went to the movie theater to see Jason Lyrics. And at the end, because we all thought she died. Because, you know, the gunfight and the shootout. We all thought she died. But at the end, when they were on a bus and they were leaving and they showed her in his arms, man, y'all should have heard the theater. People was clapping and whistling and everything. That was just like out of my top 10 movie experience. Um, Jason Lurz, one of my best movie experience I ever went to was the interaction at the end with the crowd. That mean the people that was in that theater, they were into that movie. They were enjoying that movie. That movie pulled them in. I love movies like that. And at the end, the way the crowd went all in the theater, when she was on that bus landing his own, because we all thought she had got killed. It was so amazing. It was a great movie. Listen, uh, uh, they are trying to make money off of their own dysfunctions. Yeah, because you know why? It's not their fault. I'm going to say it. You know why? Because of American people, because of human beings. Y'all already know that people love chaos. If it's not chaos, don't nobody want to hear about it. If it's not drama, don't nobody want to hear about it. Look at that girl, Peach McIntyre. May I say her name? Look at all the drama. 
and the last couple of weeks she has brought to her channel and she is making a killing she is making money again that's when i say it's your sanity and your family is is money worth the embarrassment that's what this is all about put your air your dirty laundry letting people look at you crazy letting people have your name in their mouth is it worth the coins that you get back in return look at that girl peach she didn't put she put everybody in her family stuff on the internet so this chick was having a whole um dance happy party that her dad had passed away you know having a party saying she happy and all this other stuff or someone's dying no matter how they treated you i'm not her i don't know what's going on in her family i don't know what her father did or did not do for her but at the end of the day i would never praise a death this woman was all over the internet praising her father death, putting all her family business out there, talking about everybody, pulling in all the coins. She been silenced for the last week. You know why she been silenced for the last week? Because when October the first came, October the second came, you know what your check gonna be for October for the for the next following month. They tell us what our check October the second. Tell us what our check is gonna be. Once she found out what she made, she went dead silence. Hey, Miss Amy, she went dead silence. Now all of a sudden, I'm about to change my life. I'm leaving that stuff alone. I'm about to start over. Now she back on positivity. <laughs> yes, she is. Now she back on positivity. Now she back in the gym um, doing exercise videos. Then she held, and I'm not even going to lie. The girl is a freaking genius if you're all about the money. If you're all about the money and you don't care how people talk about you and you don't care what people got to say about you, you don't care if you lose your family in the process, I'm going to say you're a freaking genius because she brought the coins in. And now she's quiet. She really did the seminar. She did some woman empowerment seminar. I'll talk about you pay $1.79. And come in and come in. Let's talk about um, what was she saying? Say it was about um, women coming over and just airing out your grievances. Honey, I wouldn't air not one thing with you. Now, one day I saw that. I said, I'm sorry. As genius as I think you are, I couldn't trust you with my deepest, darkest secret. She even said one day in one of her lives, I'll tell your business. And so how you gonna tell somebody that you'll tell their business, then turn around, host a dollar seventy-nine cent Zoom platform saying let's come air out our grievances and talk to each other. <laughs> Man, I said somebody gotta be crazy. If they go in that Zoom and tell this woman any of that damn business, and when she get mad at you, she gonna have it all over YouTube. That's crazy, but she's a genius, man. And that's why I say, in, in the end, everything that everybody been doing these last couple of weeks, it's like everybody trying to pull in the money, no matter how it make them look, no matter how crazy it makes them look. I said, you encouraging your soul squad to take off? No, because at the end of the day, I'm not going to lie. I, I, like I told you guys a long time ago, I bought something. I never, I bought something from her because she knows what she's talking about when it comes to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I don't see her. A lot of people see her as a scammer. When you pay for something, someone give it to you. I don't think that's a scam. I don't think that she's scamming anybody. She offer you, she offer you something and you pay for it and she gives it to you. If you get what you paid for, that's not a scammer. A scammer is somebody is that if you give them something and they promise you something in return and you don't get it. You know, she don't promise that you're gonna be a successful YouTube. What she do is that she give you the tools to say this is how you do it to get there. So, I, you know, I also, uh, 
I bought um I told you guys a long time ago, I bought the her um thing for what five dollars or something when she had something for five dollars. Um how to get the how to get monetized on Facebook. I bought that. Oh, I know you didn't say a scam. No, I'm I'm just going back. Other people say her her workshops are scams. I don't believe her work. I ain't saying you said she a scam team. Well, other people be saying her workshop is a scam. I don't think her workshops is a scam. I mean, a lot of people have a lot of people who she had helped and who they paid um, to help her. A lot of people have said that she had helped them with their channel and she had helped them get monetized and she had helped them do that. Um, so I, I believe in her. Um, and her class and stuff that she was taking. Like I said, I bought one of her little her little things on Facebook, and it did. It helped me. I got monetized on Facebook based on the information that she I paid $5 for that I didn't even know, and I got it from her, and I got monetized on Facebook. So, um... No, well, we switched topics because we were talking about, at the end of the day, everything that we put out there, is the money worth it? Because we are talking about, like, embarrassment and um, and people looking at you funny or people talking about you. Is it worth the money? So we were talking about how is um, is it worth the money? Because, you know, the young, number young lady on YouTube, she, done, you know, did so much with her family and did so much and put so much stuff out there. And it's all about getting money and the algorithm because we we're talking about how people like negativity people like drama and that's why and people draw to it that's what we're talking about when jada was um when jada linked linked certain parts of the book out it got people talking because it's it's drama oh my god they've been separated for seven years oh my god that got people talking and people draw to negativity you know what i'm saying it, it, it's the human in us I was drawn to it. It's a human in us. You know, I, I would like it if people could, like, you know, let's, let's draw our self-awareness to more positive situations and stuff like that. But it's the human in us that that, that leads us. When we hear something, we got to know, well, what's going on? Well, what's happening? And stuff like that. And you don't mean to, but it's something, it's something about us that's made that way. And people know it. And so they're gonna feed on it. They go give just what they give, so that so that so that we could come in, so we could be fed that information, and we give up the coins, we give up the money, and we watch and we do this and we do that to line their pocketbooks. And that's why I was talking about. That's why I said. So that's why I say. And I said that all money is not good money. I said that last week. And that's why I said, in the day, do y'all think it's worth it? You know, is, do you think it's worth doing, you know, putting people through stuff, probably losing your family? Is it worth money, worth people looking at you sideways, looking at you crazy? Is it worth people saying negative things about you? Because people will say negative things about you. They're going to tune in. They're going to listen. They're going to make judgments. They're going to pass judgment. People are people are judge, judgy. People are judgy. Even when they tend not to be, we are. Hey, Stacy. Look, that's what I was saying. And that's why I got like, and these was like good examples of like making people look at you crazy for a coin. Because I can tell you, I got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff right now going on in my personal life. If I really want to make a check off of YouTube, I could put all my shit on blast. Put a good old title up in there. Put it out there, put it all on blast. Well, guess what? Everything ain't for everybody. I don't want people looking at me crazy, looking at me sideways, more making, making, making judgments on, on, on my trials and my tribulations and all that stuff like that. So I keep whatever I got going on with myself, I keep it personal. I don't have to reveal everything. You give just, just what I need to give, and that's it. Mm, excuse me. So, so, excuse me. Some people this uh yes, Stacy. I have a cold girl. Yeah, it is. But see, Darlene, that's why you and Taylor talk about that situation, and and that's why I was telling earlier is that. 
what I had put in the GoFundMe fund, because y'all probably wasn't in here earlier, Dolly and um, the, and um, Taylor. What I put in the GoFundMe fund, it wasn't my kids' part. Like I said earlier, you guys wasn't in here. I need 5600 $5,600 to move it to my apartment. What I put up was for me. I said, I'm going to share this apartment with my sons because right now I really can't afford an apartment on my own. My sons are working, been working now for a long time. They're sharing an apartment with me. They came up with the money that I needed from them. We trying to move November the 1st. They got theirs. I didn't put a whole story in there. So everybody was thinking maybe her sons didn't help her. They need to be helping her. They did. And sometimes when you don't say everything, it do make people pass judgment. But, no, for us to get our apartment that we try to get, it's 5600 First month's rent and security deposit. I only asked for fifteen because that was the rest that we needed. They did their part. They did help me. They came up with the part that I asked them to come up with so we could go into the apartment. I did that. They told me not to do that because they said people was going to judge. They told me that people were going to think that we're not helping. I went on faith and said, no, ain't nobody going to think that because I put my trust in people. And I have to stop learning to do that instead of putting my trust in my family when my family and friends said, oh, you know, my friend Julia said, girl, you know what people are going to do. They're going to thank your sons. And the first thing Julia said, they're going to thank your sons not helping you. And I said, no, they're not. I said, this, I said, I'm not saying it's not what we need. I said, this is only 15. I said, and that's what I need on my end that I need to get up. They didn't gave their part up. They didn't help me on their end. So, and I think... <clears throat> And that's why I said, that's why my sons told me don't put it up. They said, Mom, you don't put it up. Just take your time. But I'm in a rush. I don't want to lose the apartment. You know, it was, they had three. Now they got two. And I didn't want to lose it. So that was on me. I did that. Yeah. So... So that's where that came in from. And again, that was my fault because just like everything, I had trust in people. You go draw, go for a black alien, okay? Um, I had trust in people. I put faith in people. I believe in people. So when they, when, when each people, each person told me not to do that, I, 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 I did them. I waved them off. I weighed them off. And so I should have listened to it, but I didn't. So that's what it was. But it's all good. I, like I said, anything was for me is for me. And hey, Derek. So that's why I said I shouldn't have did it. It was my fault. And well, at the end of the day, I took it down. What I raised was refunded to everyone. They should have got an email. And like I said, it, it was my fault. And, you know, I rushed into it, you know, I'm from, since I was so ready and I'm so tired and I was so ready. And it was my fault not listening to the people around me. But, you know, just believe it. Oh, no, 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 no. Ain't nobody going to say nothing bad. I said, even a couple people told me I should do it. You know, from Soul Spot, I said I should do it. And, you know, so I did it. And, you know, and it backfired. <clears throat> but it's okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. So that's what we're talking about. At the end of the day, is money worth just putting yourself all out there? That's all. Is it worth just putting your? Uh, I know. Say, is it is it is it worth just putting yourself out there at the end of the day? Making a crazy, making people look at you crazy. Oh, and that's even go for me with the go for me. You know, is it? Is, and that's why. And that's why I said no. It's not worth it. It's not worth the stress. It's not worth the mental health. It's not worth the um, people looking at you crazy. So this whole this whole on the couch was all about. 
you know, money. It's all money, good money. You know what I'm saying? Is 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 putting yourself out there on the limb. Is it is is it worth it? Is the money worth putting yourself out there on the limb? I gave three scenarios about and three storylines on what not is worth it. My own storyline basically was the don't was the go for me worth it? Was it worth it me putting myself out there, my vulnerability out there? Was it worth my was it worth my sanity? Was it worth my mental health to put that out there to ask for help? You know, <clears throat> was it worth it at the end having people look at you sideways? Just like the young lady Peach McIntyre exposing her family, saying all the things that she is saying, you know, basically dancing on her dad's grave, giving a holler and happy that his her dad had passed on because what he did and did not do for her in her life. Was it worth her mental health? Was it worth people um coming at her, talking about her, telling that she need to go seek help? Was making that money worth worth that how much did you get in the end so that you may have lost your family members putting your mom on blast putting your sisters and brothers on blast was it worth at the end and then we talk about jada pigger smith you know she's out here she got this book out here that's going to bring her in revenue is it worth it at the end humiliating your husband putting your private life on blast and so basically this whole on the couch was about is money the, in, the means to the end when it comes to your self-preservation when it comes to your lot when it comes to you you know your faith and your and your and your mental health is it worth it at the end hey <laughs> mm. yeah Mm. So yeah, so that's what this is all about. Yep. I am Allie, baby. I didn't know how much I was. I what I am. Oh, uh, for real. See freedom. So yeah, so it's all good. Things it's gonna happen the way it's supposed to happen for everybody. And so yeah, so I think and everything is just a lesson learned. You know, everything that we do, we learn a lesson in it. Whether not it's a good lesson, a bad lesson, you take something about you take something from everything that you do in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because right now, I can't afford it, Alan, baby. I can't. So, yeah, I am. Oh, which three sons? Um, Fufu, Michael, and Joshua. Because you know what? At the end of the day, um, that's how you say Ayana Light. At the end of the day, I won't keep stuff real. The economic, um, it's hot out here. It is hot out here. Sometimes it, it, you try to make it on your own. I seen this thing like a month ago where his father said he had to, um, him and his daughter had to get a place together in order to make it. I mean, everybody out here don't have high paying jobs. Some must go, some must um, work on minimum wage jobs. And, and the money that they're asking for rent these days is crazy, okay? Sometimes some people just can't make it on their own. Sometimes it takes more than one person, you know, to get together and, you know, go to some, the, the, um, go their separate ways, you can't do it. I wanted to do it and I was gonna be gonna go out here and do it, but it's hard. It's hard to make it, um, um, yeah, yeah, of course, Jackson, I, I named them oldest ones, that's who I'm going in with, as far as money-wise. Um, it's hard out here to make it on their own. I mean, some people could do just fine, perfectly on their own. Some people need me roommates and need a helping hand. And I've just come to realize that it's hard. A lot of us, and most of us, we live in paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes you got to take all your money just to cover the rent, especially in our area. Yes, especially in our area. It is crazy because I ain't trying to put my business out there. But what we're going for, 
And what we trying to do, we, what we going for is a three bedroom and a den and two bathrooms. You know how much they want a month for this? $2,800 a month for an apartment. $2,800 a month plus water and electric. Okay? It is not hard. I mean, it is hard. It is not easy. And I am finding more and more families uh, probably need to stick together and to get it done. No, Brandon has his own place. Brandon has his own place. And it's not even how. This is a three bedroom and a den that we're, that we're hoping we can move into. It's $2,800 a month plus water and electric. It is expensive out here. It is hard. And if you where I live, I live in the DMV. So y'all already know it's expensive in this area. It's very expensive. So yeah. On top, yes. Yes, Xavier. On top of the rent. And then not counting for the fact that I'm a YouTuber that I need the internet. Okay? Not counting for the fact that you can't look at TV these days without an internet. So you're talking about the rent, the utilities, and internet. Then you're talking, um, he didn't want to do it. He good by himself. He like being by himself, and his thing is affordable. And he's, he's affordable, so he good. Um, then you talk about the internet, which I need for my business. And then, like I said, you can't look at TV without it. They made it where now, you know, they've been made that where that you have to have internet to watch TV. When they came out with these analog boxes, when they took free TV away. Do y'all remember back in the day we grew up on free television? NBC, CBS, C, um, um, Fox 5, UPN 20, um, WB 50. Do you remember back in the day when TV was free? Yes, baby. It's a three bedroom of the dead. I got the master room with the bathroom. Yes, she did. And um, do you remember back in the day when TV was free? I mean, we we even even when they came out with the analog boxes, Pete was getting the analog boxes uh, for that you could get those if you could get your, your regular channels back. <clears throat> so it's uh. It, it's, it's, it's still cheaper than the townhouse because it, it, it's, 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 it's still cheaper than the townhouse. It's not going to be tight. We're going to be good, honey. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. <clears throat> oh, no. Tia got something else going on. That's not my business to tell. She'll tell y'all. Yes, we can. We sure can. That's what I said. You got to do it together, darling, Mickey. Because I don't know if she told y'all about her thing yet, so that's her business to tell. She got something else going on, which is a good thing. Yes. Uh, you walk an eye on the light. <clears throat> so it's... So, it's, it's hard out here. People, it's like people got to start working together. Families got to start working together. I mean, people been doing it for a long time. Yeah. And it's just temporary. It's just temporary until we can move into something bigger. I mean, you know say It's just temporary. I'm trying, darling. I know you keep putting that in there. I'm trying. Mm. And no, uh, nowadays we pay for everything. Yeah, I, <laughs> I disconnect my Netflix Hulu because it's crazy. Everywhere it's expensive. Well, you know that um, Netflix is going up because of this. Uh, um, I was Lucy. Netflix is going up because of the um, that little strike that they got going on in Hollywood. Some strike they got going on with the writers and all that stuff. So I heard that once all that strike and everything, I think I paid twenty one ninety nine for my Netflix now, and Netflix is going up, y'all. So when this whole writer strike and stuff is over, Netflix is um, the kitchen is beautiful. Netflix is going up. 
Um, I don't have Hulu no more. I stopped my Hulu. I don't have all the apps that I have no more just to save money. And, and it's crazy how all the apps, because I heard Hulu was going up. And y'all, I'm going to tell y'all what Netflix did to me. Did y'all hear, uh, like some years ago, that Netflix um, was doing that you can't share your password with people because they algorithm or IP could pick up that it's not you and somebody could be in a different state or somewhere. Let me tell you what Netflix did. So I met me and my children. We we share the Netflix. Everybody got my password. That's how you do it. Bump that one bill. Why everybody should have different? Why everybody should have Netflix paying Netflix twenty one dollars? So everybody got the Netflix password, y'all. Last week. Michael called me, Ma, did, what's going on with the Netflix? I said, why? He said, it won't let me sign in. I said, what you mean it won't let me sign in? He said that um, it says something about I'm not the person on the IP or not the network something, and it logged me out. I got to prove to them who I am. And I said, oh, shit. And he said, what? I said, they implementing that thing that they said it's going to do years ago about people sharing passwords and sharing accounts. I told you, they trying to get their coins. They said they was going to stop that. Uh, Rochelle said, yes, uh, my two brothers had to move in with me. The rain has gotten out outrageous. Once people start giving up their houses during the pandemic, apartment rent went crazy. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, I said, oh, well, I said, so it's nothing I could do about it. I said, so, well, since I'm paying the Netflix bill, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to get your old deck this because they cutting people off. And so a week later, I go log into Netflix. They try to get me to do it. They said I was in the middle of looking at Netflix and I went out and came back in to do something. It had cut me off, told me that I was not the owner of this Netflix and that I had approved myself through email. So I had to go to Netflix.com live or some stuff. I had to put in my email address. They had to give me a code. I had to put the code in. And once I put the code in, redid my password. I had to prove to them that it was me. I logged back in. And then when I went, I logged back in and let me back in. And then when I logged out again, when I went on to YouTube and tried to come back to Netflix, now it's saying my IP address didn't match. It asked me at the item, do you want me to do it say share or did do you want me to do something with this network? I said yes. Then it asked me, are you home or are you on the road? I said, I'm home. Or it said, are you traveling? I said, I'm home. And then I, I, I answered all those questions and it logged me back in. So basically at this point, if you're not using my Netflix right here in Brandon House on Brandon's IT network, can't nobody else use my Netflix no way else now. My Netflix has always been, has been flagged now as a sharing that I share my password and I'm we all not in the same area. So um it's a Netflix chain here two months ago. No more share. Yeah, so basically y'all the sharing of Netflix is about to be over for everybody. Everybody you're gonna have to get their own Netflix or you're gonna have to be in one household on one Netflix. <coughs> the teller said I need Netflix to mind his business. <laughs> So, yeah, so now I'm good with my Netflix. So, basically, if I was, like, to go out of town and I'm in a hotel or something, I would have to put that I'm traveling so that I could use my Netflix. That's crazy. So, if you go out of town or you go to somebody else's house and they ain't got Netflix and you're trying to chill with them, you have to put that you're traveling in order to log into your Netflix. That is so crazy. <laughs> Netflix is going to make sure they get there because at the end of the day, they'll be like, oh, you're not sharing this no more. <coughs> so people have to go pay their own $21. Because I paid $21.99. Or if it's $21 or it's $21.99. I don't know. But it's not over It's not over 22 but I know it's 21 Lately, they are not good enough hot dog water. It's a bathing hot dog water. <laughs> Lately, they are not good enough.
Uh huh. Somebody said, I remember cigarettes was 25 cents, a coffee was 5 cents. Oh, gosh. Ooh. Mm. Somebody said, call me. Oh, this Mr. Montgomery? Stop playing. You changed your name. Bath and hot dog water. Oh. <laughs> Somebody else said, I remember that too. Oh, he changed his name. But they already charged for Tubi. Tubi, you didn't know? They already charged for Tubi. Tubi had the regular Tubi. And, you know, on the regular Tubi, you get commercials and stuff. But they got a Tubi, I think it's $6, with no commercials. So you already pay for Tubi. It's your choice. You can do the free one where you get all the commercials in the same shows. Or you can do the one without the commercials. I think it's like 6 or $8. Hi, uh, GR123. How you doing? GR underscore one, two, three. Oh, Angela, uh, my cash app is, um, my cash app is dollar sign to fly jack. Dollar sign to fly jack. It's a dollar sign, the number two, and the word fly, F L Y, and Jack, J A C K. And it's a picture of Beyonce. Say Hulu did the same. I don't even have Hulu now anymore, but I want to get my Hulu back because this is how they drag you in. I, hey, Miss Lisa, I've been seeing shows that's coming on Hulu that I want to watch. Yes, Angela, that's it. And it's a picture of Beyonce. Uh, but you know what? It, it, we share because everything is so expensive these days. You know, we share. And then I didn't share. It's, like, it's not like I was sharing with, you know, a friends or neighbors. It's like you're sharing with your, with your children. Like you're sharing with your children or your spouse. So it's not like I was sharing with friends and neighbors. I'm, I'm sharing with the family, you know, like with your children. You know, my children are all on my Disney. And my granddaughter is on my Disney. I pay, what, $120 a year for Disney? And that's coming up in November. I don't know if I'm better renew that. But, um... I pay $120 a year for Disney. So, yeah, I gave that to everybody in my family who got kids. I gave it to my granddaughters and their parents. Hey, I got Disney for a whole year. Here's the password. Put it on my granddaughter's tablets. You know, my granddaughters got Disney Plus on their tablets. I mean, I paid for a whole year for it. Why not give it to them? Hmm. I know that's right. No, I didn't, JC. I gotta I gotta go check it. Uh my PayPal is uh mm, Deron Andrew at gmail.com. So it's um, Deron Andrew at gmail.com. D E R R O N Andrew A N D R E. My man, child and I spell A is Andrew. Mm, and that's my damn son. A N A N D R E W at gmail.com. Deron Andrew at gmail.com. And that's my. um. That's my PayPal. And on that PayPal, you got to choose family and friends. You got to choose family and friends or I will not get it. On the PayPal, you got to choose family and friends. Guys, Andrew at gmail.com. That's my PayPal. That's my PayPal. <laughs> uh, mm. And I also have, um, what's that thing called? Um, I have Zelle. Zelle is my email address. No, I know Amazon have a streaming app. I'm trying to go for November the 1st. I'm trying to go for, I hope we go November the 1st or a little bit out. Hope before Thanksgiving. 
I hope before Thanksgiving. I hope before Thanksgiving. I want it to be Thanksgiving in our new place. I'm praying for it. We're working on it. I hope before Thanksgiving. Oh, my Zelle is my email address. It's TanyaWaller45 at gmail.com. So my Zelle, oh, that, I love them. Free V. I love that. I just discovered them Black and Bipolar, and I've been looking at them a lot. Um, so my Zelle address is TanyaWaller45 at gmail.com. Oh, yes. It's everything. We got together. We sit. We talk. We had meetings. Things will be different. You know, everybody come together now because we realize we can't do it on our own. And then we do miss being with each other and stuff like that. So we're going to see. We're going to see. At the end of the day, it's nothing but a try. A 2.0. You know? Oh, Angela, that happened to my sister, but that happened to me too. You got to keep your cash app on lock because um, you will go into your cash app and you will notice that somebody tried to um, do a, a, a door dash for $9 or somebody tried to do something for $7 or somebody tried to do an Uber ride or something like that. You got to keep that cash app on lock. I keep my cash app on lock until I'm ready to use it. I unlock it because you keep it open. And then so when your cash app be on lock, you'll see all those different attempts to try to get into your cash app, but they can't get in there because it's on lock. Because it's on lock. So just that's a, if nobody never told y'all FYI, keep your cash app on lock. That keep people from trying to take something from you. So when you're ready to use it, just unlock it, use it for what you gotta use it for, and then lock it back. That's how I do. And I had to learn that the hard way because I had in the past. I thank you, Bert. I had in the past that um that had happened. Yeah, so you got to keep your cash app on lock. And my son said, told me about that. I didn't know about that. So that thing, mine is locked. And why it's on lock, you still could receive money. You can still receive money, and you can still send money while it's on lock. You only need to unlock it is when you're trying to purchase something or you're trying to go. Because, you know, if you got a cash app card, you could go to the ATM. Or you could go to the ATM. No, you don't. It's a spot on there. Oh, let me see if Jackson come with his phone and I can show you how to do it and where to go to the y'all, y'all know. Y'all ain't heard me this a long time. I'm gonna see if he's gonna come. He may get mad. Jackson! Mm. Hey Jackson! Man, huh? Yeah, because I don't know. I forgot. I don't know where it's like you go to, but I'm going to tell you. Yes, lock that damn cash app card up. I, I mine is on lock. And then when I need to use it, I unlock it. And then I lock it right back. <laughs> Y'all, that's actually not coming to me. I'm going to do a video so you guys how to lock your cash app. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jackson! Jackson! That's the, um, I'm ignoring you, Mom. You call my name too much, so I'm not answering you right now, Mom. Silence. So we might not get that tutor, that tutor, that, 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 that. Oh, here you come. Hey, Jackson. Uh -huh. Bring your telephone and come here. About the, um, to show them where to go at the lock their cash out, how to lock the cash out. A lot of people don't know how to lock their cash out. I'm going to show them where they go to the lock. Bring me your phone. So just throw your phone. I got the phone up in the air. Can everybody see you? Hello. Throw it to me. <clears throat> oh, Xavier said it. Okay. Just go to the section where it shows your card and press lock card. Okay. <laughs> he said, Mom, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> so Xavier said, just go to the section where it shows your card and press lock card. You always say I always bug him. 
Oh, okay. So, Xavier. Yeah, so they say, I need a lesson. <laughs> Thank you, Jackson. <laughs> Thank you, Xavier. Yeah, and y'all, y'all will see that will save you. Since I do that, I, I, I never had a problem or an issue with money sitting in my cash app or leaving money in my cash app before I transfer it to my bank. I never had an issue. Now, don't say, oh, someone sweet told me to do it, and I kept a $1,000 in there, somebody stole my shit. Now, I ain't said nothing can't make, because people are geniuses when it comes to these computers, but I know for me, since I've been doing it, and everybody in my family does it, I had had no issue. And I can leave money sitting there with no problem. And no one touch it, take it, attempt, or nothing like that. And you can even transfer money out with it on lock. <laughs> mm. All right, guys, I'm going to give you some water. Yes, you could do it just like that. I am so glad I did came to do all the couch. I wasn't going to do it because I was feeling bad. And you know, when you take NyQuil, for me anyway, when I take NyQuil, NyQuil puts me to sleep. That's one reason why I like taking it. When I take the NyQuil and try to get this congestion, this cold done out of me, it puts me to sleep. I could take, that's why I used to say this a long time ago, before I experienced my first airplane ride, I used to always say, if I ever get on the airplane, I'm going to pop me two NyQuil's 30 minutes before I get on the plane. That way, as soon as I get on the plane, about 15 minutes, I'll be asleep. I, no, not right now, stupid star. Um, I'm, I'm, I am moving to Maryland. I'm not going to go to the Bible part of Maryland I'm moving to. I am moving to Maryland. And it's about an hour out of D.C. Doing rush hour traffic. It's about an hour out of D.C. Yeah. I like Zell too. Uh, JC, I just locked it. Yay! Yes! Yeah. I know. That's my son told you. Okay. So, look, look, life of the pies. Wait a minute. How you lock it? So, uh, try some Sudafaz and kill up because just, okay. Well, it's not too affordable because I told you the price of the rent, but it's, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it is what it's going to be. Uh, go to the section. Xavier put it on here. I go back to Xavier. Or oh, Xavier said, just go to the section where it shows your card and press lock. Go to the section where it shows your card and press lock. So go to the section where it shows your card and press lock. And you should be good. All right, guys. I am out. I don't know what I'm about to do the rest of my day. I think I'm about to look at television. But like I said, I'm glad I did do all the counts. So I was going to let this cold take me out. And, and anybody don't remember, thank you, Sleeping Star. No, it's Metro Accessible. That's why I say it's still Metro Accessible. That's why it's not that far. It's like, I'm going to say, that's because of traffic. It could be about 50 minutes. But without traffic, it's about 30, 35. But with traffic, if you're driving, it's about 50 minutes. And it's still metro accessible. We was one thing we made sure. Excuse me. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying to. Um... Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna have me some uh, some hot tea. Cause my son Joshua, he could, they got out of work, but he was making me tea with the ginger, um, ginger tea, honey, lemon, and hulls, and putting on fresh ginger, chopping up. You know, ginger good for you. And ginger and tea. If anybody never tried ginger and tea, 
ginger and tea is so good and i know some people say okay well i'll just buy some ginger tea bags no get you some fresh ginger chop that ginger up i don't know how much ginger he put in it he chopped that ginger up and put that ginger, let it boil with that tea. When I tell you it is so good and so refreshing, it, it, it is really good. No, she didn't. She did. Because, <laughs> oh, T -T 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 crazy. Maybe she didn't say which airport. Because I said airport, but I never said which airport. And she must have told y'all which airport, but I don't, I'm going to see which airport she told y'all. Because she could have been wrong. Because I know Tia don't get things right. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Gratella, that ginger and that lemon taste so good together. As you would, you would think, oh, I'm going to put some ginger in my tea, some fresh ginger. Honey, That it opens you up. And it has such a good flavor. He really know how to make it. It really... Oh, I saw that. It was an international. Angie said it loud. That's all. Oh, yeah, she told me she saw Angie this morning. Yeah, because he under the weather too, but he going to work sick. Oh, MW, we the MW, you done missed the whole thing about to go for me. <laughs> y'all, could y'all catch MW up? Oh, she only said the L I. Okay. Y'all, could y'all catch MW? Girl, I ain't doing no more gun for me. Thank you, girl. I just did. Yes, Alan, baby. He get to put 16 people on there, and he already gave his list. And them 16 people get to stay on that list for one year. And each year, he could revise the list. But the airlines that he worked for, we don't get it free both ways. He get it free both ways but we don't we get one way free so say if we go on somewhere we have to pay out we we get to choose whether or not we want to um pay our way getting back or pay our way going there and which i think is still a good deal because you only you only got to pay one way and the other way is free so yeah 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 um 28 So, yeah, so he, because um, Tia told me something about Andrew. Um, you can't have the D. Um, if you had cash app, the cash app is dollar sign two fly jack. It's the number two F L Y jack. It's a picture of Beyonce. Um, my PayPal is Deron Andrew at gmail.com. Remember, you got to put it under. Um, friends and family, not business or anything like that. Um, you got to put it on the friends and family, and it's Deron D E R R O N A N D R E W. Um, Deron Andrew at gmail.com, and my Zell is Tanya Waller 45. Tanya Waller 45 at gmail.com. That's my Zell. I know he said he want to take us somewhere. He want to take us traveling. And so I said, yeah, okay. I think he have to wait till it's 90 days up. But I told him right now, you know what I'm trying to do. I'm not worried about traveling nowhere. But y'all, I was telling my girlfriend, once I get settled and we get this place, because you got to pray, because don't mean that because we going for this apartment that we got this apartment. That's one that I'm going to tell everybody. So I thought you said you got to No, we applying for it. We found something that we could afford together. We found something that we could apply for, and it, and it looks good. But we don't know if we got it yet, so we got to cross our fingers and hope that we do get it. And But um, it's looking good, though. It's looking good, though. But I was telling him right now, right now, on my phone, I go to charger. I don't want to go nowhere. It's always competition for apartments, Heather D. It's always. It be no apartments go first come, first serve. First come, first serve. That's why Tuesday, we I'm putting everything in and I'm gonna cross my fingers. All day I just got had the money when the time comes. 
when the time come, when the, when the, when the time come. Um, I got to do the math. It's uh, 5,600 all together that I need. Fufu got a thousand, Joshua got a thousand, Michael got twelve hundred. So that's thirty two hundred. Somebody do the math. But I want to move the beginning of November. They telling me if I wait and we move in the middle of November, they can have more money, you know, to pit with it. But I was like, I want to move the beginning of November. I want to do it before the apartment. Um, you know, get gone because you know this is the time of year that everybody's trying to move and you got to put it in. Yes, you got to make three times your rent. So, with this apartment, I ain't trying to put all my information. I do. But with this apartment, for before we try to get the three bedroom a day, your income got to be $93,000. $93,000. They say your income got to be $93,000. So, well, all three of our incomes together, we at 97000 So, hopefully, we meet all the criteria. What I'm worried about is credit. I've been working on my credit score and everything, but, yeah. But we, first of all, we had to make sure we made the income requirement. By all three of us doing together, we had 97 So, we know we are making the income requirement. And it's crazy that people, you have to make that much money to get an apartment. So basically, if I was to go in there by my with two, I'm going there saying I make sixty-seven thousand dollars a year. They won't give you the apartment. They won't give you the apartment because they say, "Oh, you don't make the income requirement." But I make sixty-seven thousand a year. I'm telling you, I could do this. But you know, no, no, they want you to make three times the rent, like the young lady said. And for this particular apartment, the income you got to make ninety three thousand a year. Thank you, Xavier. The people in the rent office don't even make that much. I don't know who come, who come up with these rules and regulations, and that's why a lot of people are downsizing. Y'all think this thing is a trend? I remember years ago, people would never tell nobody they live in their car or they live in an RV. People are running to their RVs. They are running to that van life. They are running to these cars. After a while, landlords and everybody ain't gonna have no money. They ain't gonna make no money because they making the requirements crazy. They making the amount of income you got to have crazy. And that's another reason why people have to um, team up with everybody. Because, first of all, you can't even make the rent. You can't even make the rent. The income requirements to apply for some of these apartments. So you got to team up with people to make the income look good so you can get it. And that's, so that's, that's, that's crazy. But who come up with the rules and regulations? And that's why people, a lot of people are opting out. I mean, I'm not putting it all out there. I'm putting out there. I ain't putting all my business out there. I'm just putting out there how much the people saying you have to make for the um rent. You can call any rent over there. I'll tell you. And I'm just saying, with all us together, we, 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 we're good. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> As I said, that's all I'm talking But thank you for your concern, though, boo. I don't know. I got to look for that. I got I, I to gotta look and see about that. Um, hint, um, Miss um, KS. I pray for two. And that's why people got to work together. And that's why a lot of people doing these downsizing. A lot of people moving their car. Now, me, personally, I can't move in nobody's van. Because I go to the bathroom too much. I need a bathroom. I be when I be looking at these van life, these van life um YouTubers and, and all that stuff. I be like, how they go to the bathroom? Who when they get up in the middle of the night? I know I get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was using that example. I don't even that. I was using that example. Yeah, that's not saying what I'm saying. I made. I was using an example. Yeah, that's true too, Miss Bird. Everything pays a part. Pays a part of it. And I see you, um, KS. 
Yeah, that's just an example. That's not what I was saying I made. But I'm just saying, they just make it hard. You know, if you did make that much, you couldn't still get an apartment on your own. And that's why a lot of people can come together. So to even even to make the, 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 the right amount income requirement to even fill out an application and do something or to get something. And it's so crazy. And that's why I said, too, that's why a lot of people downsizing. They be having bad rules at TV's girl. I'm sorry. You see all this butt the donkey dog I got. I ain't fitting in none of them bathrooms. That's like a damn airplane bathroom. <laughs> I'll be in a luxury building and got a housing lottery. Fill out those applications. I will. I'll check it too, Miss Casey. But yeah, I ain't fitting up in that. I be seeing some of them bathrooms on those trellis and all that stuff. Mm-mm. They look like I need room. Yes, I got too much. <laughs> I mean, look at him like, no. That's just like I always say, I don't think I would ever use a, a use a um uh, use a bathroom on the airplane. I ain't trying to get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, should, I know what I can fit into and can't fit into. Girl, I be all over the place in that damn bathroom. <laughs> oh, container homes. I used to look at those too a lot. Those container homes, those are so amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Kay and Ray. Those are so amazing container homes. People was on those for a minute too. And they were doing those for a minute as well, container homes. And everything. I am Miss Bird. I am and that's how I look at it. We gotta do what we gotta do at the end of the day. I ain't got answer to nobody but to God and myself. So hey. Uh they be shy once. Yeah, I be saying people be having um uh, be having um gym memberships and all that stuff. Hey Miss Teresa. Yeah, because, you know, my sister was saying that some places don't have rent control. You know, um, Ted, my sister said D.C. got rent control, but I don't know about that. She said Maryland don't have rent control. It depends on what you at. And um, I guess rent control means that they can't go up on their rent every six months, or every year, or something like that. It's the law stating that they only go a certain percentage up on rent a certain amount of time or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure. But, yeah, it is. I'm keeping the faith. Um K K S. I'm keeping the faith. I'm keeping the faith. Oh, they go up as much as they want in North Carolina. Wow. Don't nobody want to move. No, it's not, Heather. It was, but it's not. It's some stuff that still got to get done. Yeah, that's my girlfriend told me, babe, to take some vitamin C. I've been taking a little vitamin C holes. You know, holes got the little vitamin C in the green, the green pack. As she said, same for South Carolina. It's cheaper, yeah. So I've been having those... Um, I've been um, having, you no know, taking some of those for vitamin C. And then I'll forget that vitamin C in the orange pie. Yeah, it is. Somebody say, I'm in Charlotte. It is pricey. All right, yeah, I'm about to go. I'm about to go drink me some tea, go to the bathroom, find me something to watch on television. Oh, Y'all, look at this movie on Amazon Prime. It's called My Fault. By the C. Shots. Mmm. Thank you, babe. I hope it's so too, Miss Bird. Y'all, if y'all want to see a good movie, it's called My Fault. The way it's yeah, emergencies. That's with the orange pack. Yeah, I want to get some of those. 
Y'all been complaining about rent here in Minneapolis. Girl, Lucy, everywhere, girl. Um, and for a good Saturday weekend, look at this week called My Fault. It's on Amazon Prime. If you got Amazon Prime, I like this type of movie. I'm just going to say it's for bit and love. And when you throw people together and tell them they who, who they are, man. All I'm going to say is that a mother meet a man who got a son. And a man meet a mother who got a daughter. That's all I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, I saw now, um, now here, that was good. Um, so, get that suit of it would dry up the nose, okay. So, y'all, go look at my fault. That is so good. And a new pet cemetery on, um, Paramount Plus. I still got on Paramount Plus. It's called Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Be into scary pictures. That was good. Thank you, J. Poo. That was good. If y'all try to look at a good movie, that was good. I'm trying to figure out what I looked at. Um, Meg 2. Now, yes, Allen, baby. Girl, you hit that on the nose. And it's so good, it's going to be multiple parts. Because when it ended, I said, no, it got to be a part two to this shit. And yes, and you know, I always go to Google, I look things up. This is round one. They already in production filming round two. Yes, it is. You got um, to go look. It's called My Fault on um amazon prime and i was looking for something to watch and i was scrolling through amazon prime the other day while i laid up in this bed and i saw it i said "Ooh, let me see this and it was good because it reminded me of this movie called um i can't think of the other i can't think of the other day of this movie no it's not a series it's a movie but you know how movies be having this part, so it's not a series. It's a movie. And, you know, I guess it's going to have a part two because it's going to be continuation because the way it ended. And the parents, child, it's going to be a part two. It's, it's a good watch. And Pet Cemetery, um, New Blood, I mean, Bloodlines, it's scary, but it's not scary. You know, it's the same Pet Cemetery story. It is taking you back to 1969, where it all begins, and talk about how it begins before that, the you know, land of the Indians and all that stuff like that. Um, but Pet Cemetery Bloodlines is on Paramount Plus, and then um, the Peacock got something called the Continental. If you're into the John Wick series, well, Peacock got a three-part um, series um, called the Continental on how it got started, and it's about the two men who runs it. So, yeah, that's a three-part. I got to look at that. Juliet told me about that. It's on Peacock. If you got Peacock, it's called the Continental, and that's a three-part um, three series, and it's up there. Um, take a look at that and uh, what else? Or oh, if you got HBO Max or something like that, Meg 2. If you've never seen Meg 1, Meg 1 is on HBO Max. And then you look at Meg 2. Meg 2 came out in August, but it didn't hit the movie streams already. So look at Meg 2. I thought Meg 2 was pretty good. The first one was still better, but I am a Jason Satham fan. I love Jason Satham and... Um, so I'll look at his movies. So Meg 2 was worth the watch. I will say Meg 1 was better, but Meg 2 was entertaining. And if you do both of them together, you got a great movie night. Grab you some popcorn, something to drink. Look at Meg 1, look at Meg 2. That'll be an awesome movie night for you. Um, but I really don't have nothing else right now. Oh, some of my favorite shows are back. Anybody was into Quantum Leap on NBC? Uh, Quantum Leap is back. Um, I look at the first episode yesterday. There's already two episodes up there, guys, that you can look at. Oh, there's a new show on NBC called Found. F-O-U-N-D, Found. <clears throat> that, um, um, the young lady used to play at, um, used to play B 
Uh, her name was V or Vi or V or Vi on Shameless. You remember the black girl from Shameless who played V or Vi? She was married to the white boy, Kevin. Well, she got her own show on NBC called Found. Go on YouTube. Look at the trailer for Found. I'm telling you, you're going to go right to NBC, find out the day it come on, and start watching it. It already premiered. I'm letting episodes build up so that I can watch it. But it's called Found, F-O-U-N-D. And based is about when she was young, she was kidnapped. And she got away, but they never caught a kidnapper. And when y'all find out the reason why they never caught a kidnapper, huh? Go look at that trailer and come back in the comments and tell me what you think. That's going to be your new show for NBC, okay? It, 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 it's off the chain. That trailer, like, what in the world? Okay, Heather D, you already did with me. You already, y'all already there with me. I ain't look at the first episode yet because I want to, I want to, see, I'm a binger. I like the binge watch. I'm sorry, last night I looked at one episode of the new Quantum Leap. They only got two episodes up. I want Found to get me at least four episodes. At least four episodes. And when I cut it on, I could just go from the beginning and to that fourth, it's straight. I'm looking for four episodes. So I'm not even going to go in on it until I see four episodes. As soon as I see four episodes hit, I am going to watch it. I am going to watch it. I am. Uh, I might bring it back this week. So I'm waiting for four episodes to hit. I could go straight in. Yeah. Yeah, me too, Alan, baby. That's what, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, Susie Q, let me talk to you real quick. Susie Q, are you still here? Because I know I've been going on and on and posting got all. But Susie Q, I'm coming at you because right now, I don't know if I got any other Walking Dead fans in here. I don't know if I got anybody else who would care about these spinoffs. But I know Susie Q and her husband. They are down for the walking dead. And I don't know if she's still in here. But I need to speak on these spinoffs. I did not care for the one with Maggie and Megan. I don't know what it is they got to do. It was something about it that didn't pull me in. I want to know that Junior husband watch it. And then what was y'all thought on it? What was your take on it? It has six episodes. I really didn't care for it too much. But what I am going to say, and maybe because he is such a popular person, he always been one of my second favorite persons on the show, that Daryl, the one with Daryl in The Walking Dead, honey, that thing fire. Daryl spinoff is fire. So I know, hey Tanisha, so I know he gonna get a second season. That Negan and, and that Negan and Maggie spinoff, I, I have got the name of the title. I'm just so not with it. But Daryl spinoff, the fighting episode is tomorrow, this Sunday, six episodes. I'm here for season two. His spinoff from the first episode gravitated me. It pulled me in. And I'm here for it. It is so good. Daryl has always and always will be an interesting character of The Walking Dead. He was a character, I believe, that was written in and was not part of the original um, comic books. Um, he was a character that was not meant to stay and the longevity of the Walking Dead series. And not only that his character brought so much life to the Walking Dead, to the fact to when it ended, he ended up getting his own spinoff and his spinoff is on point. It is him in all of his glory. It is him in all his little dirtiness because it's still to this point, I don't think my baby ever take a bath. I just don't know. But it is everything that Daryl is and that he brought into his spinoff. And you can still see that whole personality that didn't get lost in the spinoff. His spinoff is way better than Megan's and Maggie's. And I don't mean to put theirs down. I know everybody need a job. I don't see them having a second series, a second season. If they do, it's going to be by the skin of their teeth. But most definitely, 
Daryl is most definitely going to get a second season, if not a, um, three or four or five seasons. His is really, really good. I'm waiting for Rashawn's and um, Rick's next year. I know theirs going to be good just off popularity of who they are of their character. But, yeah, but Daryl, I'm here for it. Um, Susan Cuse, if you're still here, come over in the um, Discord. Let me know how you and your husband was liking everything. Or did y'all get a chance to check them out? Because I know you guys are walking their fans. Let me know what you think in the comment. Or come on over to... Um, Come on over to Discord and let me know what you what you guys feeling about the these spinoffs to The Walking Dead if you're into it. All right, with that being said, I am out of here because I'm tired of sniffing and sniffing with you guys being so ishy. But hey, I got a cold, and yes, I am out, girl. You guys see the last episode of The Walking Dead finale series finale. To see that, but we we knew we know he's not dead, and so that's what the spinoff. He Rochelle, Rochelle's, and I can't even say the girl name. I got a cold. Um, it's gonna be her finding Rick, looking for Rick. I was say, what's the Discord? Oh, the Discord is a um, it's an app that when I don't go live. And uh, Soul Squad members want to still talk with each other because you guys build a community. So when I'm not live, you guys can still have the chance to to um, talk to each other and catch up with each other and see how everybody's doing. So you can go to Discord and do that. It's a free app that you download. And um, my Discord people are not in right now because they they can actually send a link to the chat. And you go sign up for Discord. I don't know if you can sign up for Discord. And maybe my link, my chat has a name. My Discord has a name. Sova T or something like that. I don't know for sure. Oh, what's the Discord ID or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's a link somewhere. And I don't have the link. Next time we come in, I'm going to see if somebody can have the link. So those of you who's not on Discord, you guys can go to the app. And it's just camaraderie between the Soul Squads when I'm not live. And you guys can still keep in touch with each other. That's what it's for. That's what it was built for. Mm -hmm. So I am out. I got to see what's for dinner. But I'm really not eating because I don't have no taste bud. I used to look at Love After Lockup. I don't look at it re uh, uh, relentlessly. I have always, through the years, um, looked at an episode here, episode there. I know of it. I watch certain episodes when I get a chance, when I remember it. Um, but I haven't really been on top of it. Yeah, they end the show without finding Rick. Yeah. Cause, but, but see, you're going to get all that in the spinoff, Taylor. You too, K and Ray. Be blessed and stay and stay safe. You guys too. Um, you go, but um, love after lock up. I I I'm, I I heard of it. I have seen a couple episodes. I look at it here now and then, but I don't look at it like go to it on this day and watch it and stuff like that. But it is good for when I do see it. For when I do look at it, it is good. So I am out. You guys have a great great day. I see you on the next, again, on the couch. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time now. So if you um, turn on 12 o'clock, where she at? You got three more hours on the Easter Standard Time. With that being said, you guys have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and I love you guys so much. See you guys later. Bye.